Okay, the next part, we are going to look at some of the apparatus that we are going to use very commonly in the school lab moving forward. Okay, the first apparatus we are going to use is the Bunsen burner. Okay, so different parts of your Bunsen burner, we have the barrel. This is to raise the flame to a suitable height. So essentially, my flame will be at this area. Okay, we have a collar. Collar, this one, I can turn it. Okay, this thing, I can turn it. And when I turn it, there will be a hole here. Okay, this hole, which is called the air hole, will open or close when I turn the collar. So this collar essentially is to control the amount of air and be more accurate is actually the amount of oxygen that's entering for burning. Okay, and then this over here is connected to a gas tap. So in the lab, right, this one, there will be a hole switch is connected to a tap. So when I'm on the tap, right, there is a gas that enters over here and I let oxygen enters, okay, and then there will be burning. So oxygen supports burning. When I want to burn something, when I, I definitely need oxygen. Okay, and then this opening over here is also known as the gas jet. So this enables the gas to rush out from the gas to supply and to draw air. Okay, and the base, this whole blue part is just for support. Okay, so compounds will undergo combustion reaction. In a combustion reaction, so whenever you see this word combustion, it's the same as burning, it's just a scientific word. And then whenever I see this word combustion, it means oxygen is always needed. Okay, the gas enters from the tap, right? When I turn on the tap over here, right? This gas is usually hydrocarbon. So hydrocarbon contains CH4, C2H6, basically any compounds with the element carbon and hydrogen. This one is usually used for combustion. Okay, this reaction is exothermic. Heat and light is evolved. Okay, when I burn the gas from the gas tap, Okay, when I supply oxygen, heat and light is evolved. Okay, and then this heat evolved is used for experiments. So this heat that's given up is for the flame that I want to use for burning. Okay, we have complete combustion and incomplete combustion. Okay, so complete combustion, this is when you know your hydrocarbon, these substances burn completely or burn fully. So it burns fully when there is enough or when there's excess oxygen. Okay, and then when I burn carbon and hydrogen compounds, it will give me CO2 and H2O as the only products. Okay, so how does your Bunsen burner, how does this burner receive enough oxygen? That's where I have to open the air hole. Okay, so if the collar at the bottom is open so that more oxygen or more air can enter, more air enters this way, then there's more oxygen. So more oxygen, I will get complete combustion. Okay, this flame will be hotter and then it will appear blue in color. And then as a result of this, this one goes more than 400 degrees and this is your complete combustion. Okay, a hotter flame is also known as heating flame and it's blue in color. And then this heating flame is actually non-luminous. I cannot see it and the air hole is open. This part over here is very important in terms of your Bunsen burner. Okay, and then I have incomplete combustion. So incomplete combustion, right? This air hole is going to be a little bit closed. There's not enough oxygen, okay? So incomplete combustion, not enough oxygen, right? This one, the air hole is going to be closed or half open, and then this limits the number of the amount of oxygen or the air that enters for burning. So if not enough oxygen, the flame is less hot. When it's less hot, it is yellow. Yellow is a luminous flame. I can see it because it's very bright. Okay, this is also known as the safety flame. Okay, so these are your flame colors over here. This first color, this one is the incomplete combustion. Okay, it's a yellow flame. It's the safety flame. So whenever I'm trying to light up my Bunsen burner and then I'm going to oh, turn to the left to take something and I don't, don't use the flame for immediate heating. So what must I do? I must close the air hole to get a safety flame so I can see, oh, the fire is still there. 
okay this flame uh yellow flame sorry uh, yellow flame because i can see it is also known as the luminous flame okay then the last flame over here this flame over here this one okay blue flame of course with against the black background i can see but if it's against the white background right this one i cannot really see so this blue flame is formed by complete combustion okay i also call it heating flame okay i use when i want to heat some chemicals or some reagents i use this blue flame it is the heating flame this is complete combustion the air hole is open okay and then because this flame is blue is blue in color this is non-luminous i cannot really see it okay so two steps to light up your bunsen burner okay number one i have to connect the air hose air the hose securely to the bunsen burner and the gas tank then i adjust the collar to close the air hole okay close the air hole first because i don't want the flame to be too hot because i'm not going to heat it immediately i just try to safely open the bunsen burner Okay, so I don't want the air, the flame to be too hot, so I close the air hole first. When I close the air hole, not enough oxygen enter, so I will get a safety flame. Safety flame, which is luminous and yellow. Okay, then I turn on the tap, light the Bunsen burner with the lighter, and then I will get a safety luminous flame. Then after that, I want to do the experiment already. I want to start to heat the products, uh, the reagents, the chemicals. Then I will adjust the air hole accordingly to a heating flame. So meaning to say I will open the air hole so that oxygen or air can enter for complete combustion. Complete combustion, this is used for heating because a lot of oxygen enter in it produce a lot of heat this is for heating and then this heating flame is blue and is non-luminous okay so the parts of your bunsen burner is very important we have to know it okay and then sometimes right what will happen is you will have a strike back so strike back occurs when the flame is given too much oxygen then flame, there's a fire burning at the top of the chimney. So the flame, instead of burning at the top of the chimney, it is burning at the air jet over here or the air hole. Why? Because when I want to light the Bunsen burner, I never close the air hole. So the steps to light a Bunsen burner are close air hole, then light. Then when I want to heat, then I open the air hole. So sometimes immediately I go and light the Bunsen burner without closing the air hole. So when I don't close the air hole, a lot of oxygen can enter. So a lot of oxygen enter instead of burning at the top over here, it burns over here. It burns at the air jet. And as a result, we have strike back. Okay, so strike back during this situation, uh, you will hear a loud hissing sound. So if a strike back occurs, you can see the flame is burning here, and then you will hear a loud hissing sound. So something wrong, right? When you hear some sound, what must you do immediately? Turn off the gas tap immediately because it's extremely hot. It is not safe. 